Uh, this is a session on informed consent in health research. The outline of this session, we will be discussing about the various ethical principles related to informed consent and we will also try and recognize the various elements that are supposed to be present in a good informed consent form. First, let us start by understanding what is informed consent. Informed consent is a permission given by a research participant to the researcher after obtaining and understanding the process and consequences of participating in the research in a sense of complete voluntariness. So, there are four essential components in the informed consent. The first and most important component is competence of the individual who is providing the consent. The second component is that the information that is provided to the participant to make this decision is a necessary information and a complete information. Then the most, the third important aspect of informed consent is complete understanding of whatever information is being provided to the participant. And finally, the most important of all these elements is a sense of complete voluntariness and a voluntary decision to participate in the research project. Now, let us take a look at the various ethical principles that underlie informed consent process. The principle of autonomy is the most important principle which underlies informed consent. Autonomy means each individual has a right over their body and they have the right to make decisions about what happens to them in terms of treatment, in terms of interventions, in terms of research that is conducted on them. So, basically the principle of autonomy means that they have complete ownership or self-determination over their body. The next important principle that underlies informed consent is the protection of vulnerable participants. In all research projects, there are some participants who are considered as vulnerable. For example, children, poor people, people from lower socio-economic status, then people who are of lower educational uh, attainment, their interests also needs to be protected and their welfare has to be kept in mind. That is the second important principle that underlies informed consent process. Then comes the principle of transparency. This principle implies that before embarking into the research project, the research participant has to know all possible information about the research project, participation in the research project and the consequences of participation in the research project. So, this complete revelation of all truths related to the participation in the research is called the principle of transparency and that is another very important principle which forms a component of informed consent. Finally, there is a principle of accountability. Most likely in many situations, researchers tend to feel that the informed consent is a legal document. It is just a legal document which is signed in order to protect their interests, in order to protect them from future litigations. More than this, informed consent is a document that is prepared in a sense of complete accountability of the researcher towards the welfare and safety of the research participant. So, that is another very important principle of informed consent. So, I quickly summarizing the principles which underlie, underlie the process of informed consent, we have the principle of autonomy, the principle of protection of vulnerable participants, the principle of transparency of all truths related to participation in the research and the principle of complete accountability and responsibility for the welfare of the research participant. Now, let us take a look at the various elements that are comprised which are part of the informed consent process. First is threshold elements. So, as the name implies, these are elements which have to be met before we initiate the informed consent process. First, the entire process of informed consent has to be done by a competent individual. So, the first element or the threshold element is the element of competence. So, what do we mean by competence? Competence is the ability of the research participant to understand, 
to consider the various aspects and to make an informed decision about participating in the project. So, competence is a very important threshold element and the other important element is voluntariness. That is, there should be no undue pressure, there should be no external influences, no coercion, none of these things should be operating while the participant is entering into the study. So, these two are known as threshold elements. Then we have information elements. These are elements or facts related to participation in the study. For example, what are the procedures that will happen if the participant enrolls themselves into the study? How many times will they have to visit the study site? What are the tests that will be sub, uh, done on them? What are the tests to which they will be subjected to? What are the procedures? Will they have to take any medicines? All these information elements to be provided in a very easily understandable manner is the second component or the second element of the informed consent process. The following two elements of informed consent process do not directly relate to the technical aspects, but these are more of relational aspects. The third element is the counselling element, that is the informed consent process is not just a one way communication, it is not just a process of delivering facts to a competent individual, but it is a process of counselling. It is a process where there is a two way communication. The researcher provides information, the participant listens, understands, engages with the information, asks questions, clarifies. So, that counselling element is the third element of an informed consent process. And then there is the relationship element or the trust building element which is by far the most important aspect of the entire informed consent process because in this element trusted people for the research participant like family members, friends, well-wishers, they have to be involved in the process of informed consent so that they get engaged with the process of consenting. And this entire process of informed consent has to be done in a sense of respect, in a sense of caring for the research participant. And the final aspect after all these elements are completed is the consent element which is the actual documentation of the informed consent, where the participant actually authorizes the researcher to conduct the research by uh, putting their signature in the informed consent form. If they are not able to sign, they, are, uh, they uh, leave a uh, mark which is their left thumb impression. This documentation is actually this, the last and a very small component of this entire process of informed consent. Often times in research projects, the emphasis is laid on this documentation and the rest of the elements are often uh, given less importance, but all these elements are required for a good and thorough informed consent process. Now, let us also look at what is the pathway of understanding or comprehension. How does a research participant understand? the information that is provided to them as part of this informed consent uh, process. First and foremost is what facts have to be provided to the patient. This has to be decided and the informed consent document has to be prepared by the researcher and this has to be reviewed and approved by the ethical committee. This process is by far the most important in the pathway of comprehension because the most appropriate information needs to go here. And this pa part of the pathway, uh, the comprehension pathway is influenced by the capacity of the researchers and the capacity of the ethics committee. The second step is appropriate implementation of the consenting process. In the previous few minutes, we uh, saw what were the various elements of administering a good informed consent. So, this informed consent administration has to be done according to these good practices. And this appropriate elementation, uh, implementation of the informed consent process is influenced by trained investigators and trained researchers who are in the field administering the informed consent. The next important pa uh, part in the pathway of comprehension is the understanding element. So, yes, so these are the information that needs to be provided, it is written in the informed consent document then this is how the informed consent has to be uh, delivered 
that process is appropriately followed. Then comes the understanding and this is by far the most crucial step in the informed consent pathway of comprehension. So, how does a participant understand? First, the language and the content have to be in a very understandable and easy format and it has to be delivered in the appropriate manner and adequate time has to be provided for the participant to internalize this information. So, that becomes the next step in the comprehension pathway. So, this entire informed consent process is a time consuming process. It requires a lot of investment in terms of time of the researcher as well as the participant. So, after passing through all these steps, the final step is comprehension and it is very important that there are appropriate tests of comprehension which are introduced in the informed consent process. Uh, when I say tests of comprehension, I mean asking simple questions of the participant, asking them do you understand how many times you have to come to the study site, do you understand how much blood will be drawn for the test, things like that, very simple questions which they can recall and they can repeat or give an answer that ensures that comprehension is achieved. So, this is the pathway of comprehension which uh, the research participant follows for understanding the nuances of the study. Now, let us look at what are the important elements that should be present in a good informed consent document. The first and foremost most important element is that there should be a clear statement that it is a research project then there should be a clear and non ambiguous explanation of objectives and methods of the study. These two should come hand in hand in the beginning of the informed consent document. Then details of the procedure of the study, how many, uh, what is the duration of the study, uh, how many total number of participants will be recruited, what are the number of visits, all these information has to be provided. Then more importantly, the participant should know what kind of data they are giving to the researcher. Are they giving blood samples? Are they giving biological specimens? Are they just answering some questionnaires? So, what kind of data is being collected from the participant? That information is very important. It has to be featured in the informed consent document and there should also be a very clear statement of what are the benefits for the individual and for the community of participating in the research project and what are the anticipated harms and inconveniences of participating in the study for the individual as well as the community. These will be elaborated in greater detail uh, in subsequent uh, sessions of this course. The other mandatory element of informed consent is how will confidentiality of patient information be protected, how will it be preserved, how will their confidentiality be maintained, that has to be explained. Then there should be explanation about any payments or reimbursements that will be done to compensate for their time that they spend for uh, involving themselves in the project, for the kind of wage loss that they may suffer. So, payments and reimbursements have to be clearly explained and there should also be clear explanation of what happens in case there is an injury related to the participation in the study, in case there is an adverse event. So, what will be the treatment provided, will the treatment be free of cost, then what will be the compensation provided for the injury that has been suffered, how will this be decided, these details have to be clearly mentioned. And finally, after all this is mentioned, there should be a statement that participation in the study is completely voluntary and they can withdraw or not participate without any consequences for that. This is a very important element of an informed consent document. Then after all this is written, the informed consent document should also clearly state and identify the researcher who is the point of contact, in case there is a doubt or a question for the patient participant, whom should they contact. It should have clear details of postal address, telephone number, email address and all forms of communication with the researcher and there should also be a clear uh, details, identification details of the ethics committee which has approved this study and approved this informed consent document. Apart from this, 
there are certain optional elements of informed consent. These include in case it is a clinical trial, there should be some mention of what are the alternative treatments that are approved and that are already available in the market and whether there is any possibility of social stigmatization because of participating in the study and whether there is any insurance coverage that is being provided as part of being part of the study. And now of late, lot of studies are being done on stored biological specimens. So there should be a clear mention whether biological specimens obtained from the participant will be stored, frozen or stored for future use and what is the scope of this kind of a use and whether there will be a re-consenting process if the, proce if the specimen will be used in a future date. Apart from this, the informed consent document should also mention details of post-research benefit sharing. How will the information be disseminated? If it is a genetic related study, if it is a study related to genetic analysis or it is a if it is a study related to collection of human specimens and this human specimen is used in a commercial purpose, how will the profit or the benefit that accrues out of it be shared with the originator of the specimen? This detail has to be mentioned and there should also be a very clear mention of whether there is a publication plan, whether there is a plan of publishing this article or this study findings in uh, journals. So these are all optional elements. Now let us look at what are some of the challenges in obtaining informed consent. So we have seen so far that informed consent is a process and it is a rather time consuming process and there are three important challenges, uh, three main categories of challenges. One is challenges in comprehension or understanding. Most important in this is language barrier because most scientific terms as we know are all in English and translating them into local vernacular in an accurate, scientifically accurate, culturally appropriate and understandable manner can be quite challenging. The next thing is misunderstandings of even something which has been very accurately translated. Misunderstanding can always happen. There is something called therapeutic misconception that is in a clinical trial or a drug trial a patient tends to understand that the therapeutic, the interventional drug which is given to them is actually a treatment. This is a type of misunderstanding that often happens in clinical trial settings. So these challenges have to be addressed. There should be measures taken to improve understanding and comprehension by using simple language, short sentences, easy to understand phrases, wherever possible illustrations. If possible, uh, video clips or podcasts, all these can be used for delivering the information to address the challenges in comprehension. The next category of challenge is challenge in voluntariness. This is where the issue of vulnerable participants comes. So when you have a doctor-patient relationship, the doctor is the researcher himself or herself and they are requesting their patient to participate in the study then the patient tends to feel that they cannot say no because they are in a dependent relationship with this researcher come doctor. So this compromises the full voluntariness of the research participant. So challenges in voluntariness are very important to address. This is why many a times researchers who are doctors in clinical practice themselves often do not enroll their own patients into their studies because this conflict of interest and this vulnerability of the participants becomes very important. The third category of challenge in informed consent is challenge in capacity to make a decision, challenge in capacity and this happens in case of minors and children uh, who do not have the capacity to fully discern the various aspects of the study and give a consent or people with mental disabilities, unconscious patients, they lack the capacity to make a choice. So often for these people there are legally acceptable representatives who make the decision on their behalf. So these are some of the challenges in this entire process of informed consent and they need to be addressed very consciously in any given research proposal and this needs to be evaluated by an ethics committee. Quickly summarizing the various aspects of 
uh, informed consent, the critical nature of the important con uh, informed consent in health research and the various challenges in administering informed consent. First and foremost, informed consent is a voluntary consent after obtaining necessary and complete information and it is provided by a competent individual after fully understanding the various aspects of the study. And informed consent upholds the principles of autonomy, protection of vulnerable participants, transparency of information and accountability of the researcher to the welfare of the participants. And a well drafted informed consent has uh, several important critical elements which were seen as part of the presentation. And it is the responsibility of the ethics committee to carefully look through an informed consent document and identify these elements and see that a good informed consent contains all these elements. These are some references for further reading. They will be given as uh, ha uh, links to this module. Thank you.